All right, we're gonna look at webhooks. This is automation number two, and webhooks will become the APIs for your applications, but it will also be automation since it can be triggered and do something later on and save data or reply back, which I, I might show, but I'm gonna treat it more like an API. We're gonna end up with something like this, and I just pasted this over, because like I said, it's just JSON. You can easily copy and paste these elements into other workspaces. And we're going to take a webhook and we're going to parse it because we're going to, the goal of this webhook is you send in a URL and it will return whether that site is spam or not relative to the particular prompt we have in place. So at this point, we get the webhook, we send it to Firecrawl to scrape. There's so many ways to scrape. I just happen to be using Firecrawl. And then we have the LLM decide whether it's good content or bad, a spam or not. In the particular use case for this was the user gets a lot of links they have to post to their site. It was uh, Laravel News. And it just saved him a lot of time because he didn't have to look at each one and verify it, right? This webhook can be triggered and then reply back to his system. But we're going to get a look at how to do the LLM chain and then how to add a client, but even more importantly, how to structure output, which is made a lot easier with this implementation. And then we're gonna to respond to the webhook. So instead of doing it later on, which I might show at the end of this, we're gonna just immediately respond, immediately being relative to how quick the LLM and fire call is. All right, by the time you're done, we'll have this working system. And again, I'll show it with the, potentially the reply later. Now let's remove everything from this board and I'm just gonna choose it all and go to the empty board that we're going to hit more often. And let's see what we can start off with. So here we are, and I'm on my local. And we're going to add our first step. So the first step is going to be a trigger, and I'm just going to use, not this one, so let me delete that one actually. I'm going to do use the webhook. And so now it gives us a screen that says here's your testing URL and what type of webhook and the path, which you can change. You can make it a nicer path, for example. We don't want an authentication just yet, and there's no options we want just yet. We could later on require a token. We could do authentication that way as well. But we're gonna do a post, and we're gonna post that URL. So now let me grab Postman, and let me update this so it actually works. Let me click Cancel. And now we're gonna send something to that URL. So let me send it and we're gonna see our first problem. It's not registered and what that means is this. That particular webhook isn't active because this is not active, but this is not gonna do much if we make it active. So let's do a test. So what we need to do is we need to listen. Now once we listen, we can send it over and there we go. Now. Later on, this won't return a reply because it's in testing mode, and we'll see that in a moment. But for now, we're all de done with that. We see the data here, though. This is what's really nice, and we're going to pin that data, so we don't have to keep doing that. And that's another thing to learn with N8, N8N is that we can pin the workflows. We can pin, pin the data so we don't have to keep coming back to it, uh, and then the next node can benefit from that, so you're not running it all over again. So what do we got? We got headers, we have body, and we have the URL. This is all we really care about um, in this case. Now, if we close that, we can then add something. So that's where I'm gonna add Firecrawl. Now Firecrawl, for some reason, isn't here, and I should make a custom one. But we're gonna make an HTTP one. So whenever you're stuck and there's no node for your API, you can just make one pretty quickly. And I'm gonna go copy some stuff over. So it's a post and it's a URL for Firecrawl. Oops. And it's gonna have authentication, but for some reason I put it as a bearer token in the header. I'm gonna try not to do that. Let's try it with the right way. So predefined are all of these different credential types. I haven't seen any way to do this here. So then what I usually do is I use generic and then I'll set it to header auth and then I'll create a new credentials. So when I first did this, I gave it a name that didn't work. 
So we just want to name that author authorization. This is where your name goes. And this was really tricky for some reason for me to really see that I could do that because there's no edit button there. And then we're going to put in the particular string it needs and it won't show it, which is great. And if you're using a known provider, it would actually test it out for you. We'll come back to that later. So this should work. If it doesn't, we'll just do it the, the old fashioned way. So now we're going to send a body and we're going to send it as JSON and we're going to use JSON. Uh, you could use the fields below. I haven't done it that way either. Let's see. I'm not going to, but you could do something like URL. And we're going to see a lot of this is where you can just start dragging things over, which is really nice later on. So we're going to, that's key. But in this case, we're going to say send body. We're going to say JSON, using JSON. And then I'm going to copy this over and we'll look at it really quick. So this is the payload that Crawl expects. And this guy here, all I had to do was make this payload and then drag that over. And sometimes it doesn't perfectly drag, but you can just move it. And it even shows this little preview, really nice. And I could pop it out if I need more room. Again, sometimes it can seem like a bit too technical of an interface, but it actually does a good job overall. All right, so now we have that. So now we're saying, hey, when this comes in, let's go to Firecrawl and let's go scrape that site. And let's try it, because again, we have the data pinned over here and we're gonna test it here. And we didn't have to run the, the, the webhook. So we sent the data and it grabbed it, title, language, everything. And I'm going to pin that so I shouldn't have to keep running that. So now we have those two. Now the next one we want is the actual LLM. So this is the tricky one. We are going to use these eventually, this one. This is a really good one. It has tools and so much more. I should probably use it here, but I'm going to start off basic, and it happens to be called basic, so let's go get that. And we're going to start off with this guy. Now, you'll see it has this chat interface. I think I showed this in the last video, but we're going to delete that. And what we're going to do is add a model. And that model, I'm going to use Anthropic on this guy because I need it a bit more. I guess Grok could do it. I have had trouble Grok, having Grok do structured data. Now, we have to have our system prompt. So we can do this together because I don't think it's a lot of typing. But I'm going to force a required output format. And this is what I'll do now, and then we'll come back. So now we have this new option here. And it's here that I'm going to give it some structure. I'm going to say, OK. I want to give it a structured output parser. And I'm going to give it this structure. And hopefully that will help keep it in line. It's really nice, actually. It's very consistent. Stuff I wasn't able to do as easily with just code. I know ChatGPT is really good, but it's been a lot better with this, I think. All right, so now we have that. So let's go to our, um, our LLM. So we're going to say, OK, we're going to define below. And I'm treating this as my system prompt. So basically, this is the kicker. Let me grab that. So your role is help decide is the quality, it's technology, site, and news. If it's about buying a car or hiring people, don't do it. Otherwise, it's let me know how good it is. Now, what we want to do here is we're not just finding the format here. I'm, I'm going to let that other node do that, but sometimes... I would do something like format the output, or I would have another area called task. So this isn't the best prompting. Oh, there it is, task. And I don't do the format output. I'm going to let that other element do that. But then we're going to add a prompt of the user. So there's the system prompt. So it's interesting. Why not put the system prompt there? It probably would be fine. Maybe I'll even do that just for the heck of it, just so I can. I can't leave that blank. So let's do that. User. And then we're going to say text, and then we're going to break this up. So we're going to say message is an expression. Let's do this. And we're going to pass in some data. So obviously I pasted some old data structure. So let's look at the new ones. We want the URL um, that came in, which is funny. I don't know why I referenced that. I want to show something here. This is, this is another amazing thing with Node uh, or at N8N. We have two now nodes before us. So I could grab the URL from the webhook. I don't have to grab it from the node in front of me. 
And then here I could say, okay, what is it that we want from here? Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It grabbed this title. So let's go grab that one moment. Let's get rid of that. And then we have our no data markdown. And then we have our description. Now it's interesting. It didn't come up with a description. So we're going to say title in the markdown. So body and title. Eh, I don't need it twice. Let's remove that out. Okay. So we get those two things for us. Oh, and it even shows us here. So we're going to hand the LLM the title, the URL. Title's not that great. My site doesn't have good titles. And then the body. Okay. Looks good enough. So now we have our message, uh, user message, and we have that. So we could actually test this using the pin data from before and then spam is false because it happens to be a technical site. If I put into there, we'll, we'll do a test after of a non-technical site. So let's see. So we got this and this, and now we want to send it back to the webhook. So right now a webhook comes in, it does all this stuff, but nothing comes out of it. So let us do this. Let us do another one here, and we're going to do a response. So let's see, add another. So I'm going to do webhook. Sometimes when you search, you won't find what you're looking for if it's a trigger, but I know on the webhook response I will. So we're going to respond to the webhook. Now, we don't want the first incoming. I want it to be JSON, and I structured it a certain way so that the user of the API would know this. JSON, then again, let's pop this open so we can see it. And there you go. It's going to give us that information on the return. Again, I could have... Did I do this here? Yeah, I could pin this here as well. So you see, we don't have to keep running that. And we could... I don't know if running this does anything. Yeah, it's not much. But now we're going to go back to this webhook and say, okay, we don't want to respond immediately. We want to respond using the webhook node. And that is about it. We have now created a webhook that will do some work and then return back to itself. Now, let's see here. Let's go back to Postman and try this out. Let's see. Here we go. Now, again, we're, you'll look here, it says test. When we boot this up, we have a test URL and a production URL. So it just changes test to non-test. So we're going to say test the workflow. Let me, actually, I don't know if I want to do it. Let me see if I could do it this way. Sometimes it just gets stuck. And I don't think it's any den's fault. I think I just have too many pins. But if this doesn't work, we'll do it a different way. It worked, but this is a problem. It most likely might just sit here. It's because the test worked, but it just stops. So I'm going to cancel out for a moment. Okay. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to activate this guy. And then I'm going to go back in here and get my production URL, which actually I just have to remove the word test. And then send it because now it's live. Now, while it's doing that, I want to quickly go back here and look, we can see it executing. So we get a sense that it's running. We get a sense that it succeeded, otherwise you'd have errors. And, and they're good because you'll see the error, digging into the errors is pretty pretty nice. And then response is here to Postman. So it worked. Now, if we added a site that was spam uh, or non-technical, I was trying to get some furniture. You see it running in the background there. The speeds are okay. Spam false. Obviously, my prompt's not that good. We would have to fix the prompt for that. So if I go back to the editor, why did it think that? Um, let's see. So this is the prompt, and this is the text. Now, another thing about N8N, it has great links all over the place. Even a feedback link here. Really nice touches. Uh, in this case, though, I want to make sure that I'm using the text field correctly. Um, and this one they don't cover. Ah, you might set the prompt to find below or have it enter anything in the text field. So yeah, it should be pretty legit. So that just my, means my prompt is crap. Give it a go. I click save and we'll send it again. If it doesn't work, we're dealing with a bad prompt. 
But the point of N8N automation is hopefully clear. Target's still not spam, so we'll come back to that. So we see how a webhook can work, and we see how we can plug everything in. Now, one thing about a webhook is many times it's, we're seeing it, we're using it as an API, but we could also do a reply back. So we could say HTTP, and we could send something back to another URL. So basically, if we bring this down here and we get rid of that, and we send into here something like a reply to, and this is how I did it with the other customer or colleague or whatever you want to call it. Then when this gets sent to the system, we can go here and add that as the URL to reply to. And then we can give it the particular body it needs from that data. So you can see how easily you can go from making this an API that gets a response right away to making this an API that will um, reply later on when it's done, which is more traditional webhook, which is funny because you think of a webhook, you think it will reply later. But in this case, we we're deciding to use it like an API. All right, you saw structured output. Things were pretty consistent there. That was nice. It continues to do this without all the issues I had before, with especially with Claude, actually. And again, we could try Grok here super fast, but I know I didn't have great results with Claude, which is interesting because you have this. Sorry, not with Claude, with Grok. And then, of course, you have your HTTP, which, again, you can, glue to, you can use for any API you need to use it for. And then save it for later so you can use it again and again in your other projects. All right, that's it. That's a webhook, lesson number two.